Hey everyone, it's Adam. In today's episode, I want to talk about how Azure manages access to your resources with something called role-based access control. Stay tuned. Today, we will be talking about managing access to Azure resources with something called role-based access control. In previous episodes, we've talked about how Azure Active Directory is a centralized service for identity and access management, and that access management for Azure resources is done with role-based access control feature. To better understand how this works, let's start with what are roles. In Azure, you have multiple resources like disks, virtual machines, SQL databases, or web applications, or many more. And for all of those services, you can perform certain actions, like you can create a disk, update that disk, maybe attach it to a virtual machine, start or stop this virtual machine, scale up your database, or just deploy web application. All those things that you can do in Azure with those services are so-called actions. Action, as the name suggests, defines what can be done with a certain type of service. Potentially, you could assign each specific action to users and applications to allow them manage Azure resources, but it would be very time consuming because there are literally hundreds or even thousands of actions that can be performed in Azure. As such, it is easier to create a bundles of those actions. So you can combine the actions that you are interested in, like update disk, start and stop virtual machine and attach disk, and create a role called virtual machine operator. And you can create as many roles as you want for your organization. So you can fine grain your permissions for your applications and for your users, however you need. And all of those are of course roles. And Azure comes with a lot of built-in roles, allowing you to manage your access to your resources and cover the most common scenarios very easily. So a role in Azure, a so-called role definition, is simply a collection of actions that can be assigned to user or application identity, and it will define which actions can be performed by that specific identity. So a role definition answers the question, what can be done? Which actions can you perform on Azure resources? Which brings us to the second topic. We already said the role needs to be assigned to identity. In this case, identities are so-called security principle, objects with an Azure Active Directory that represent users or applications. So those could be users or groups of users. You can also assign roles to service principle, so application accounts in Azure, or application accounts that are tied to a specific service called managed identity. All those are called security principles, and they can be assigned a role. So let's say we have user called Adam. We can assign roles to Adam. So let's say we can assign him a virtual machine and database operator role so that Adam can perform support and operation tasks effectively. And you can combine as many roles as you need to fit your needs. It is a common practice in Azure to give multiple roles to users and groups so that you can fine grain permissions and only grant the least privilege required to perform certain actions for specific users. You can also assign to Tom, let's say, a web developer if he's developing web applications or assign it to a group. In this case, a DB operator will be assigned to support L1 group. So that means both Jess and Pete, who are part of this group, would get that role assigned as well. And it is quite important to understand that assigning a role to a group will affect all of the users within that group. And those are exactly those security principles that we've been talking about. So a security principle is an Azure object, an identity that can be assigned a role. And those identity, those objects can be user groups or applications. In this case, security principle assignment answers the question who can do it. So a role answers the question what can be done and the security principle assignment defines who can do it. Additionally, a role needs to be assigned to a scope. So where exactly those actions can be taken? Azure is organized in a hierarchy, and a top-level object in Azure is called Management Group, which allows you to group multiple subscriptions or multiple management groups. A subscription is top-level billing object, so most of us will have a subscription as at our top-level resource in Azure when we purchase our Azure subscriptions. Under each subscription, you will have multiple resource groups. And of course, since resource groups are a logical container for resources, under them, you will have your own resources. When you assign a role to a scope, you can assign it at any level. 
In this case, if you assign it on a top level, on a management group level, that role will be inherited by all the child resources. So if you assign a role on a management group level, that role will be propagated across all of the subscriptions, all of the resource groups, and all of the resources within this management group. If you decide to assign it on a subscription level, of course, it will affect only resource groups and resources within that subscription. And if you assign it on a resource group level, the same thing applies. So you can assign it on any level that you want, even down to a resource level. So if you want, you can give me an access to your specific virtual machine or specific database only. And all of those are called scopes. So a scope is simply one or more Azure resources that the access is applied to. In that case, scope assignment answers the question where it can be done. So let's follow this with an example. What can be done? If you assign an owner role, that means everything can be done. All the actions within Azure can be taken. By who can it be done? In this case, if you assign it to user, that means Adam can do everything. So the last question is where it can be done. So let's say you assign it to a virtual machine resource called DevVM. In this case, you can read it from the top to bottom. Every action, everything can be performed by Adam on a DevVM virtual machine. And those three things are combined into something called role assignment. So a role assignment is simply a combination of role definition, security principle, and the scope. Inside of the Azure portal, I'm logged in with my administrative account, my full owner account of this entire subscription. But I'm also logged in into another browser window with a Tomdo account. Tomdo currently doesn't have any privileges. So if I would go to resource groups, I would see I don't have any resource groups or any resources that I have access to. So let's play around with roles. Let's see what roles Tom can be assigned and how to manage roles for Tom in Azure portal. So we go back to the browser window where I'm logged in with my administrative account and I can open resource groups panel to find all the resource groups that I have access to. And let's say we want to give access to one of those resource groups, let's say AZ900VM to Tom. Just open this resource group and on the left hand side navigate to the panel called Access Control IAM. In this panel, you can manage the access to your Azure resources and resource groups. This panel exists on every single resource in Azure. In here, there are multiple tabs that you can use. For example, Check Access tab allows you to check what are the currently assigned permissions to a specific user group or a service principle. In this case, if I would search for Adam and select my own account, I would see that currently I have owner assigned on a subscription level, on a management group level, and also I'm assigned a storage blob data owner also on a subscription level. So I have multiple roles that are inherited from the subscription and management group level for my account. If I close this panel and if I would type Tom, I would find out that Tom currently doesn't have any role assigned. And we could see that in our second browser window. If I want to assign a role, I can select the button here called Add and select Role Assignment. As we said, a role assignment is a combination of three things. So we need to select a role. So what can be done? As you see, there's plenty of available roles in Azure and they solve the most common challenges around access management in Azure. If I would want to give a reader role to Tom, so Tom should be only able to read and see Azure resources, but don't change them, I can select the reader role. Next, I need to select to whom do we assign this? Do we assign it to user, group, service principal, or maybe some managed identities? Next, we need to select the object, right? So who can perform this? In this case, I will type Tom and select Tom's account and hit save. Notice that we didn't pick a scope because scope in this case was automatically picked because we are now on the resource group level. And we can review all of the assignments that are done for this specific resource groups in another tab called role assignments. In this tab, we can review all the roles and role assignments that have been done for this specific resource group. And we now see Tom added as a reader. And if you scroll up, the next tab is called roles. This panel allows you to review what are the built-in and custom roles in Azure, which user groups and service principles are assigned to those roles, but also 
What are the actions that are bundled under each specific role? But that's the topic for another day. Let me navigate back to my resource group, where I will navigate even further down to a level of a virtual machine. In a virtual machine, I will go to access control again and show you that Tom currently has a reader role assigned. But we can also add another role assignment to Tom on this specific virtual machine. Let's say virtual machine contributor role. With this role, Tom should be able to manage everything related to this virtual machine, not just read it. So let's type Tom. Select Tom's account and hit save. In this case, the scope only applies to this specific virtual machine because this is the place where we access this access control panel. Now, if we navigate to Tom's account, we will need to wait a couple of minutes for Tom's permissions to be updated. But after that, he should be able to perform all of the actions based on the roles that we just assigned to him. And once the few minutes passed, you can refresh the page. When you see your resource group, you can navigate to it. And let's confirm that Tom has only reader access by trying to delete one of the resources. Let's say we will go to this public IP and try to delete it. We should get an error because we currently don't have any permissions on this specific virtual machine IP that allows us to delete it. And if we navigate back to a resource group, we also remember that for this specific virtual machine, we're assigned a virtual machine contributor, a more privileged role in Azure. Since this virtual machine is currently running, I can select stop to stop this virtual machine. And as a virtual machine contributor, I should be allowed to do that. And as you see, virtual machine has been stopped, so our role has been assigned properly. So let's summarize. A role-based access control in Azure is an authorization system built on top of Azure Resource Manager, which allows you to manage the access to your Azure resources with very high granularity. Additionally, a role assignment is a combination of three things. A role definition, which is a list of permissions, actions that you can take. A security principle, so a user group or application. And a scope, so to where we assign those permissions to. In this case, it can be resource, resource group, subscription, or a management group. It is also important to know that scopes are hierarchical. So if you assign a role on the management group level, it will affect all the subscriptions, resource groups, and resources. And last but not least, built-in and custom roles are supported. Microsoft provides you with a very long list of already available roles in Azure. You can use those to manage the access for your Azure resources. But if you will be doing a lot of operations, a lot of automations, you might find that those built-in roles might not suit your needs, might not cover all of the corner cases. In this case, Azure allows you to create a custom roles, so define your own collections of actions and then assign those as a regular role in Azure. And it works anywhere across Azure the same way. So you can either use built-in or a custom roles. All the materials for this episode can be found under episode 28 on my website. And this is it for this episode. If you want to move to the next one, use the playlist or hit the icon on the side. Our next topic are Azure resource logs and how they help us protect our Azure resources when it comes to operations. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking, and commenting. And see you in the next one.